This video covers a lot of material, so I plan to make it a series if the feedback is positive. Or, you can read the continuation at falsehistory.net. How fake is the history you learn in school and on TV? Is it a little fake because of human error? Or is it partially fake because history is written by the victors of war? Or is it completely fake because the world is not at all what it seems? The more I learn, the more I think it's completely fake. From A to Z, fabricated reality. This idea seems scary to a lot of people. The implications. But it's not scary to me. It's liberating. Instead of having drawn and settled conclusions about everything, I can rediscover the whole world with new eyes. If you look at history through the lenses of fake, it's staggering what you discover. Today I randomly chose Chicago to prove this point. The fact that I can randomly choose any place on the map to prove fake history, shows just how lazy the fabricators of history are. The common narrative around Chicago is that in the 1820s, it was nothing but a couple of houses and a farm at best. I have a clear memory of my childhood schooling, where I was shown a picture like this. How quaint. Easily impressionable as a child, I had no reason to doubt this. I liked the picture and stared at it for a while. The teacher would give me good grades if I learned this stuff. And so, I locked this content into my mind. It became a foregone conclusion. I was happy that I had learned something, not realizing that my mind had just closed to other possibilities. And this image is listed on historical websites for Chicago in the 1830s. That's roughly the same scenario as 1820. Not much change in the 10 years. According to this Wikipedia map, the population of Chicago in 1830 was close to zero. One could say that Chicago didn't exist as a place. A couple of houses in the fields aren't even a proper village. Then, in 1853, only 20 years later, Chicago was a sprawling city with massive cathedrals, factories, bank buildings, courthouses and high-rises. And in 1857, just five years more, we have a megalopolis that can compete with New York City, London, or Rome. Wow. That's impressive. Imagine, a small group of wooden carriage-riding cowboys and pilgrims, building this vast city within a very short time. What a colossal triumph. This is a photo of a Chicago courthouse in 1855, just to get an idea of the size of some of these buildings. This photo of another Chicago courthouse is said to be from 1853. Here's another Chicago courthouse from the 1800s. Here is an early 1850s view on Prince's Street. You get a sense of just how great a feat it was to build an entire city like this in just the 10 years of the 1840s. For a people who could barely build wooden shacks, a truly miraculous undertaking. The newly built One World Trade Center in New York City took 50,000 people, 12 years to build. And that's just one structure. And yet, history books are selling the idea that an entire city of advanced grand architecture was built in maximum of 15 years by a scattering of Americans who were known for building nothing more than their little house on the prairie. Don't get me wrong, it's not impossible to build a city in 15 years. I'm sure it's happened many times. But when it happens, we have proposals, designs, construction photos, documentation and reports of such a vast project. We learn from where the materials were quarried. We'll find stories of hardship and heroism during the gargantuan rise of a city which was to become one of the largest in the world. As far as I can tell, such documentation is absent. In fact, there is a huge gap in 1840s information on Chicago. There is zero photographic evidence. Searching the internet, I only found one panoramic drawing of Chicago, alleged to be from 1845. A bit sparse for the most important decade in Chicago history. The Library of Congress runs a newspaper archive where you can find all kinds of US newspapers dating back hundreds of years. You can find the archive at chroniclingamerica.loc.gov. I input Chicago to look for newspaper articles from the 1840s. As you see, I found articles from the 1830s and 1850s. But there are none for the 1840s. This is the time we ought to find the most articles, because it's the time Chicago was allegedly built. 
I use search engines to input Chicago 1840, Chicago 1841, and all the way up to 1849, to find something, anything, but find nothing. A decade erased from history. Where is the evidence that Chicago was a hustling and bustling town full of construction work, and hundreds of thousands of workers migrating there from afar in the 1840s? Surely it would be shown, or mentioned somewhere. Hmm. Maybe it was destroyed in the Great Fire of Chicago in 1871. But we have documentation of the 1860s, 1850s, 1830s and 1820s. It's the 1840s, the time Chicago was allegedly built, that are missing. Fire is not selective. But then, after a whole hour of search, a breakthrough. Evidence that Chicago was already a big city, as early as 1834. The source of this image is from the website Encyclopedia of Chicago History. Are you confused by now? So am I. The official narrative says that in the 1830s, Chicago was just a small farm and a few tents. One of these two ideas of Chicago in the 1830s must be made up. The description below the photo says. The depiction is more predictive than historically accurate, since in 1834 Chicago was neither this bustling, nor as fully and densely populated. It's easy to claim that old drawings, photos, or maps, are false, because they do not fit the narrative. But I have an alternative explanation. Chicago would most likely look this way in the 1830s if it was already a big city in the 1850s. I'd say the woodcut shows the reality, and that the images I was shown in school, with the farm and a tent beside a lake, are a fabrication. Oops. What's that? The structure on the left, is said to be another courthouse, built in 1835. The photo is said to have been shot in the early 1840s. It is the only 1840s photo I found in a 40-minute search. That's not what Chicago was supposed to look like in 1835. It's supposed to be mostly empty land and some Native Americans peacefully fishing from the river. How did this monolithic tower of pillars appear? And if there was no population there at the time, as claimed on Wikipedia, then who built it? The photo is anomalous. It's one of those we forgot to remove this piece of evidence items. It's hard to fathom how such a structure was built by the people who, so we are told, built only wood cabins. Historians need to make up their mind. Either they were capable of building more than wood cabins, or there was another civilization there before them. From where did they extract and transport the stone? Who was the architect? How did the construction workers deal with attacks from the natives? Why was this style of building chosen, considering that the American pilgrims were Protestant Christians who abhorred anything that reminded them of the old Europe and Rome? Was there public outcry when it was constructed? I found exactly zero answers to any of these questions. The image is from the website Courthouse History, at the time of this writing, but we know how quickly this stuff can disappear. Just a document, here's a screenshot from the website. How unlikely is it, that I didn't find a single aerial or panoramic photograph of Chicago from the 1820s, 30s or 40s. There are photographs of other American places from this time. All I found, was contradictory drawings, as imagined by different people. Here's one that claims to be Chicago in the 1830s. That's the way I'd expect it to look, if it was a big city in 1850. Hollywood movies generally show the time period like this. The photograph is claimed to be of Chicago, from 1837. But I don't believe it, because I've never come across a genuine 1830s photo of such high resolution and quality. It looks more like a movie set. Take a look again at the 1835 courthouse. That's what genuine photos of yesteryear look like. The following from a historical website. In 1833, Chicago was a wilderness outpost of just 350 residents, clumped around a small military fort on soggy land where the Chicago River trickled into Lake Michigan. The site was known to local natives as Jigagoo, or the Wild Garlic Place. By the end of the century, this desolate swamp had been transformed into a modern metropolis of 1.7 million. So, in 1833, Chicago was supposed to have been a desolate wilderness outpost. And then two years later, it had what looks like a cathedral and a pillared courthouse. Wow, those settlers really stepped up their game. I've never seen that in one of the numerous western movies I saw as a child. Everything I thought I knew about the 1800s, I knew from Hollywood productions. 
But none of these western movies show these gigantic structures and cities, they show outlaws riding through empty lands fighting the natives. Again. If these were simple settlers and cowboys, would they really build these types of buildings? Or perhaps there is more to the Native Americans than we are told. A final knockdown of the official story is provided by this 1830 map by mapmaker James Thompson. The street and building layout is not much different than it is today. The map proves that Chicago was already well established in the 1830s, with streets, blocks, neighborhoods. It was not a farm beside a river. This is a newspaper clipping from 1832. How did Chicago have an established courthouse with ongoing proceedings, when, according to historians, 1832 saw nothing but tents and wooden shacks? Imagine building a courthouse for a hamlet with a population of 10 people. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.